الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحب تف الله continuing on in what we were studying with the Sula Thalatha we reached a portion of the treaties Al Asul Al Thani the second portion of the treaties which is on page 19 where it says where, Allah, uh, where the Mu'allif says The second fundamental is knowing Allah, Islam by the evidences Knowing Islam by the evidences Al-Asl al-Thani Ma'rufat al-Deen al-Islami bi adillah Wa huwa istislam lillah bi tawheed wal inqiyad lahu bi ta'ati wa khulus min shirk وهو ثلاثة مراتب الإسلام والإيمان والإحسان وكل مرتبة لها أركان. he said Islam in general in general terms means surrendering one's whole self to Allah. monotheism and complete submission to the orders and instructions of Allah. renouncing polytheism and its folks, meaning those uh, people who propagate polytheism. And this has three classes or three levels. Islam, Iman, or Ihsan. And we talked about this before. If we could make a circle, and we made the greater circle is entering into the fold of Islam. A higher level within that circle of your Islam is Iman, is having strong Iman. And an even higher level than that is Ihsan. To be one of the Muhsinun, those people who worship Allah as if they see Him. And because they cannot see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they know that He sees them. This is the highest level of Iman. That is the Muhsinin. Those are the people who do the wajib, leave the Muharramat, and they do the extra ibadah. Those are the muhsinun. The mu'min is the one who leaves off the muharramat and does the wajibat. And the Muslim is the one who enters in the fold of Islam. They do their wajib and they do some sin. So they, they leave some of the uh, wajibat and they do some of the muharramat. This is the Muslim. So they have different ranks and different status with Allah Azza wa Jal. And he says in each class or each type has pillars. In each one of these levels, Islam, Iman, Ihsan. The first class, the first pillars of Islam. So the first class is a, the Martaba to Ula Arkan al Islam Khamsa Shahadat in La ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah wa ikam is salat wa ita is zakat wa sumu Ramadan wa hujjil wa hujjil bayti wa hujjul bayti bayti lahi al haram. So the five pillars of Islam as we know to bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the is Allah's slave and messenger, to observe the regular prayers, to pay the zakat, to fast throughout the holy month of Ramadan, and to perform the Hajj, the pilgrimage, if someone is able to do so. And how do we know? Meaning, what is the evidence for the shahada? For Dalil al Shahada, Qulahu Ta'ala, Shahid Allahu, Ennahu la ilaha illahu, Wal Malaikatu wa Ula al Ilmi Qa'imin bil Qist, La ilaha illahu, Al Aziz al Hakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is evidence for the Shahada, evidence from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, which means Allah witnesses that there is no deity except Him worthy of worship and so do the angels and those of knowledge showing us the status of ahl al the people of knowledge the the scholars have great knowledge 
because they know who Allah is and they know how to worship him properly. They know the legislative uh, duties of the believer. They know the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what gives them a high status. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Allah witnesses that there is no deity worthy of worship except him. And so do the angels because they witness. And those of knowledge, the people of knowledge, that he is maintaining creation in justice. There is no deity worthy of worship except him, the exalted in might, the wise. So that's the more correct uh, translation of the ayat as we see the translator here is translated the ayat, Allah witnesses that there is no deity except him. But in fact, there are other deities or other things that people take to worship besides Allah. Meaning some people, for example, we talked about uh, the Hindus, for example, they have many gods. Krishna, Shiva, this one, that one. They worship many, many things. The elephant is sacred to them, or I mean the cow is sacred. Uh, so I saw a documentary where the, the temple of rats, they felt the rats were like, uh, I think, gods from before. So they fed the rats, they gave them milk, and they gave them uh, meat. And they do that every day and they worship with them and they pray with thousands of rats in a temple. So this is shows that people take other things and other deities as gods. The Christians take Jesus as God, as a God. The Catholics, they give sanctity to the Pope. They give sanctity to meaning a, a, a sacredness to where it's a type of worship because they go, they repent to the Pope. They don't repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They give, they sanctify and declare people as saints. That, so this is as if they are, they're holy enough to where they're worshiped, they're sacred to them. But Islam does not have that. And making confessions, exactly. Making confessions to the Pope and the priest, sorry, to the priest. So then he went on to say it its meaning is, meaning the meaning of the Shahada, is there is no true deity worthy of worship but Allah alone. No true deity means refuting all beings worship other than Allah. But Allah means fixating devotion to Allah meaning uh, when it says in the ayat, but Allah uh, means fixating worship, your devotion to Allah, the one and only, more ever devoting the belief, devoting your belief that he has no power with him, that he has no partner, sorry, no partner with him in his, his rulership. So this translation has a lot of... Uh, lack of uh, you know it needs it needs work then he said the explanation clarifying this is demonstrated by Allah saying so this is also more evidence showing us about the Shahada so this is what we just said, and I'm going to give a better translation. So he said, the meaning of it, meaning the meaning of the Shahada, is that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah the Almighty. And Allah, uh, La ilaha, means there is no God. That's what it means when, if you stop in, in the Arabic and you say La ilaha, that means there's no God. That's what that means. But then that's why we have to complete the statement. And that right there is nefi. It negates. La ilaha. There is no God. That's nefian. And it and it's a nefi. Jami'a ma yu'abadu min dunillah. That is a negation of everything worship besides Allah. And the reason we understand that from that sentence is because we go to the next part of the statement. Illallah. Except Allah. There is no God worthy of worship except Allah. Except Allah. Illa 
illallah. That means that's if bad. That's an affirmation. And this is what we will study when we get to Arabic when we talk about the harf illa. We we'll talk about its various meanings. One of the meanings uh, here, this shows istithna. And so here, this is showing illallah, it's making ithbat, it's making an affirmation that worship belongs only to Allah. He's the only one worthy of worship alone, subhanahu. And then he said, well, tafsiraha, and the explanation of it, a tef tafsiraha, alladhi yuwadahuha, yuwadahuha, qawluhu ta'ala, wa ith qala Ibrahim, لِأَبِيهِ وَقُومِهِ إِنَّنِي إِنَّنِي بَرَاءٌ مِمَّا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا الَّذِي فَتَرَنِي فَإِنَّهُ سَيَهْدِينَ وَجَعَلَهَا كَلِمَةٌ بَاقِيَةٌ فِي عَاقِبِهِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ So the tafsir or the explanation that's showing us that Allah is the only one worthy of worship and that we negate any and all forms of shirk comes from that ayah, which means, Behold, Abraham said to his father and his people. So this is what Ibrahim والسلام, said to his people. He says, I do indeed clear myself. إِنَّنِي بَرَاءٌ مِمَّا تَعْبُدُونَ I do indeed clear myself of what you worship. I free myself from it. I worship only him who made me, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will certainly guide me. And he left it as a word to endure among those who came after him that they may turn back to Allah. So Ibrahim والسلام, laid that foundation in his time. That was the da'wah. He called to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He called to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and freed himself from shirk. And this is also, we find this also in the Quran in a beautiful ayat which shows us all the enbiya were on the same thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَ فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رُسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِقُ تَعْبُودِ And we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid those things worship besides Him. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَ فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ We sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone establishing Tawheed wa and avoiding and being away from any and all, all forms of those things worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what Ibrahim والسلام, was actualizing is that Tawheed, Dina uh, Hanafiya, Hanafiya. And then this is also demonstrated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying قُلْ يَا أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالُوا إِلَى كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ أَلَا نَعْبُدَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَا نُشْرِكَ بِهِ شَيْئًا وَلَا يَتَّخِذَ بَعْضُنَا بَعْضَ أَرْبَابٍ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ فَإِنْ تُوَلُّوا فَقُولُوا أَشْهُدُوا فَقُولُوا أَشْهُدُوا بِأَنَّنَا بِأَنَّنَا مُسْلِمُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem Say, O people of the book. So this is Allah commanding the Prophet sallallahu to, to make this argument with the people of the book. To, to tell them, to call them the Tawheed. Say, O people of the book, come to common terms between us and you. That we worship none but Allah. That we associate no partners with Him. That we erect not from amongst ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. If then they turn back, say you bear witness that we are Muslims. Because we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bear witness that we're Muslims. We're free from worshiping anything and anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We called you to da'wah. We called you to tawheed. And it's up to you to, to, to accept that call to the worship of Allah alone. This is, what, this is why it shows us that the call of the believer, the call of Ahl Sunnah, the call of the mu'mineen is to call the people to the worship of Allah alone. When you start in da'wah, you call to tawheed. You call to the worship of Allah. You don't call to anything else besides that. 
and bearing witness that Muhammad is Allah's slave and messenger is demonstrated by Allah saying, Now there come unto you a messenger, Muhammad, from amongst yourselves. It grieves him that you should perish. Ardently anxious is he over you. To the believers, he, he is he most kind and merciful. So moreover, bearing witness that Muhammad is the messenger and slave of Allah is realized by obeying his commands, believing his uh, the news he came with, avoiding what he prescribed or deterred us from, meaning what he prohibited, and worshiping Allah the Almighty by what he has established as a religion. That shows that you're following the son of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that you believe in what uh, that, that, that shahada, that aspect of the shahada. It entails all of those things, that you obey his commands, that you believe what he came with, that you avoid what he prohibited, and that you avoid what he, he told us to stay away from, and that you worship Allah the Almighty by what he established as a deen. All of those things are a part of Tawheed and they are a part of the Shahada. They are part of the Shahada. And we'll end right there and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself, the Shaytan, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala Nabiya Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.